are open for business. This is Cesar Vallejos and I am in Singapore. Join me as I interview thought leaders in the areas of actionable intelligence, human resources, and the executive director of the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. Facebook Live on Eagle News and also on our streaming site eaglenewslive.com. This Net25 presentation is also available on our YouTube channel at Eagle News. I am Cesar Vallejos. Join me discover the latest news and information in business around the world. Stay ahead of the curve from vision to action. Welcome to the first part of the three-part series of Open for Business in Singapore. Our first stop is at the prestigious National University of Singapore where we talked with the director of the FinTech Club of the NUS School of Computing and discovered a new business paradigm. It is a paradigm that makes business leaders get answers for their business to serve their customers better and faster. Author and NUS Associate Professor Keith Carter, previously from New York, also described how is it to live in Singapore, one of the most competitive digital economies in the world. But before we learn what actionable intelligence is in Singapore, let's go to Dubai, where our Dubai Bureau reports about franchise opportunities for overseas Filipino workers. Let's watch this. Being an OFW, it is always our dream of one day having our own business back in the Philippines and settle down for good. This is the aim of Franchise Presa being launched in Dubai to provide assistance and guidance to our fellow Kababayans on how they can start their own business through franchising. Easy Franchise, a go-to platform for all franchising needs, partnered with ICE Events, a Dubai-based creative events team, held an event in a Shana Hotel at the heart of their Dubai. Present during the event is Bubble Slim, General Manager of Easy Franchise, Mr. Francis Medina, the Mr. Expert Entrepreneur, and RJ Ledesma, co-founder of Easy Franchise and Mercato Central Group. Ako po si Bubble Slim ng EasyFranchise.com. I would like to thank every one of the attendees of Franchise Fiesta in Dubai for coming here at our event. And again, um, we're here to celebrate our modern day heroes, our expat, uh, Filipino expats here in Dubai. And we understand your need of um, wanting to earn and start a franchise business. That's why we're here to help you. And we offer our easy franchise solution by creating um, a streamlined process for you to start your own franchise. Paano to? All you have to do is go to the platform, uh, type in easyfranchise.com, mag-search ka ng brand na gusto mo. Again, maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga kababayans natin, Filipino expat. We celebrate you as our modern day heroes. Po. So it's been five years already that um, Innovate Create Events is helping our Kababayan here in the UAE, in the Middle East and all over the world. Our advocacy is for us not to teach them but to nurture each and every uh, expat Filipino all around the world. We know that we're going to reintegrate back home and what we would like to have is the same uh, thing that you should become an expat entrepreneur and while you go back for uh, in the Philippines for the reintegration we are going to be more sustainable and this is what ICE and Easy Franchise is aiming to help our um, Kababayan to reintegrate back home a winner and through that we can help you um, we know the pain we know the, the problem where um, while working here 
and then you have a, a business in the Philippines, you would like to have a service management, a professional one who's going to look for your business. If you would like to know more, if you would like to be mentored, please contact us, Innovate Create Events, Easy Franchise, um, Mercato, FJ Power Management Inc. You will have a um, professional team at the same time mentoring with the best people in the business industry who will help you to become successful. So we would like to see you soon and God bless you all. Ako po si RJ Ladesma, ako po yung co-founder ng Easy Franchise at ng Mercato Central, yung pinakamalaking night food market sa Pilipinas and food business incubator. Nandito po ako ngayon sa Dubai para sa ating franchise fiesta. Yung franchise fiesta ang ginawa po namin, uh, dinala po namin yung mga top franchises from the Philippines all the way to Dubai and to the Middle East para ma-investahan ng ating mga future overseas Filipino entrepreneurs. Hindi na kayo overseas Filipino workers po, kundi overseas Filipino entrepreneurs. Dahil alam ko naman na gusto niyo bumalik sa Pilipinas and you want to make sure yung pera niyo na iuuwi sa Pilipinas o pinapadas, pinapadala sa Pilipinas ay ginagamit sa wastong paraan or na-invest at lumalaki yung pera niyo habang ah, nagtatrabaho po kayo dito. And that is what my business, Easy Franchise, is all about. Pwede kayong pumili na isang franchise ngayon sa aming website, www.easyfranchise.com. At kung meron kayong nagustuhan, uh, dahil uh, gusto mong industriya, uh, pagkain, pharmaceutical, laundry, at uh, pasok sa budget ninyo, yung investment ninyo, and you want to put up that business in the Philippines, hindi nyo na kailangan ipatakbo yung negosyo o ibigay sa mga kamag-anak o kaibigan para ipatakbo yung negosyo ninyo. Meron po kaming professional management services para sa inyo. So now, you can open up your business in the Philippines, you can invest in a franchise in the Philippines, at kami po ang magpapatakbo para sa inyo. Uh, in that way, nakakatulong kayo sa ating Pilipsa, nakakatulong kayo sa mga, uh, nakakatulong kayo sa ating ekonomiya, at yung pera nyo ay palaki ng palaki. The event was filled with our kababayans hoping one day they'll be putting up their own franchise business back home. Everyone was eagerly listening on how franchising could help them build a future, stable, and earning business. Reporting for Eagle News International Dubai Bureau, I'm Caroline Ramirez, always one with 25. And back here in the Philippines, the country's top e-payment platforms led by PayMaya, GCash, and LinkBiz joined the Department of Trade and Industry to make business name registrations online. Sole proprietors who wish to apply or renew their business names are now able to do that through their mobile phones in the comfort of their homes or wherever they are 24-7. Here is the Open for Business report. This is only one uh, transaction uh, uh, payment uh, being done with or not. one trans online transaction in the DTI among all the many processes that we are going to We are converting everything into the online application. Uh, this is really consistent with the uh, mandate of the President. President Duterte has always mentioned that is a good business should be a, a primary concern because this is the moment that the president is a little bit better than the other than the other way. You are able to be mean, you are able to be a time, you are able to be a lunch break, you are able to be a processing. And to us, the ease of doing business really is if you can put everything here online. That's the ease of doing business. And uh, that's the reason why we are excited in this uh, ANRS next gen. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, there are other uh, advantages. So, in terms of the general advantage, of course, this is a stronger system and a more stable system. In terms of business name, so this will have business name composition and nature. They are defined also according to the BSIC, the Philippine Standard Industrial Classification. And uh, early renewal period extended to 180 days before its 90 days. So, mas matagal na yung renewal uh, period prior to expiration. So, hindi ka na pagaling pa rin, no? Less frequency. Uh, before, it's a website system now, uh, a QR code is included. 
for transparency and accountability to the public. And it's also, of course, compliant with the Data Privacy Act. Standard information required has been deduced. Also, authorities delegated to the regional and provincial directors for localized certifications. And, and many more. There are a lot of advantages in this uh, BNRS, uh, the next gen system. Provide efficient public service to all Filipinos. Make it a more convenient way and apply and pay for their um, business deals. The land bank together with partners will be able to provide a new channel by which clients can pay and transact business. The bank population is uh, estimated at uh, around 70 plus percent. Uh, thir no, no, the unbank pala. The unbank. The bank is uh, less than 30. Uh, so, um, you know, if, if, uh, if the estimate for mobile wallets is around 30 to 45, then it's already more than the bank population. Uh, because all of these uh, uh, innovations that uh, you're referring to what the government is doing, no? all of these innovations um, uh, can only be enjoyed if you have the means to pay online, right? And, uh, you know, uh, the carded population is, what? Less than uh, less than 20 percent, no. Um, so uh, you really need uh, an alternative payment uh, uh, method to be able to uh, avail of the benefits of what the government is now uh, uh, extending. Uh, so you, you really need to be to have a uh, to have a, uh, a mobile wallet. Mm -hmm. Now, sir, with all the uh, uh, one of the issues is uh, security, one of the issues mm. is uh, trust. With, the, with PayMaya, uh, what are your uh, strategies to ensure that you build this uh, trust and credibility for Filipinos to really do in the moment? Well, first of all, we are a central bank uh, DSP regulated entity. You know? Uh, so we're audited by the BSP. Uh, we we are also a, uh, a licensee of Visa, Mastercard, and uh, we have what you call a PCI DSS certification, which is the governing body of credit cards as far as security is concerned. So we have global standards and uh, the the right uh, processes to to make sure that. Uh, uh, security is uh, is uh, maintained. No? Uh, now, in terms of trust, I think you know if, if uh, customers uh, uh, enjoy and are not uh, you know uh, uh, in walang hassle in their uh, in their use of uh, of the uh, account or the card, then I think they'll will get to trust uh, the the new method. Uh, more and more. So right now, wala naman kami issues of trust. I, I don't think there's uh, there's an issue of trust. It's probably more of uh, awareness. Awareness that there is such an alternative payment. When open for business returns, we will be featuring a new approach in responding to the changes and challenges of the market with Professor Keith Carter of the National University of Singapore School of Computing. And Professor Keith Carter will be responding to your questions and comments on our YouTube channel at Eagle News. Join the discussion with your questions on YouTube and you may get a chance to receive a copy of his book. So don't switch, stay with us. Young Ones Upon a Time Season 3 Wing Minggo, alas ocho ng gabi.
We are open for business. I am Cesar Vallejos, and uh, with me is Associate Professor Keith Carter, the uh, per, uh, di director of the uh, FinTech Club of the National University of Singapore. Thank you, Keith, for uh, uh, giving us this time to talk uh, with you here at NUS. Glad to have you here, and glad to meet you as well. Well. There's a lot of, uh, of developments, a lot of innovations in terms of uh, technology. Um, of course, not only in in the Philippines, but when we uh, come here and we see Singapore, it's really a different world where um, you thrive in an environment uh, where technology is uh, embraced by everyone. Maybe before we talk about you know, your insights on actionable intelligence, I'd like you to describe uh, what Singapore technology is. How, how do you live in such uh, an environment um, that's uh, enveloped by technology from the moment you arrive and, uh, you know, from, and when you go out and you see this beautiful uh, airport that's uh, very well known around the world? What is uh, Singapore technology? How is technology defining uh, this um, very, very beautiful country? Sure. I'll tell you in two areas, one from daily life and one from my kids' point of view as well. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll start with my kids. So we moved here seven years ago, and at first my kids felt like, wow, the school system is so much harder than in New York. Mm -hmm. and they really wanted to perhaps even go back to New York. <laughs> but now, seven years later, they've uh, acclimated to the rigorous work. Mm -hmm. They're a couple of grades ahead of their friends back in New York in terms of curriculum, which mm -hmm. is, shows the intensity. But they also run a YouTube channel, <laughs> and they have a Lego animation. So they take Lego and animate it together. Uh, they take hundreds of pictures and then publish it. They got part of this love from Saturday afternoon courses. They've gone and taken programming courses, they took the animation courses and uh, began to become makers, if you would. Mm -hmm. uh, so but our audiences might ask, how old are they? Ah, they're 14 and 15. 14 and 15, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, and now they're I mean, animators, you know, yes. maybe they'll be the next uh, creative studio owners. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, and I think that that type of the environment here mm -hmm. is one where you can spend time mm -hmm. to create things. Mm -hmm. um, to a answer it from the daily life perspective, it's very straightforward, I would say. When you come out of your house, uh, like you mentioned, grab, you can simply you know, book. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to the bus and it's there. You go to the train and uh, they're coming every three or four minutes. Mm -hmm. So you, and there's a time. Mm -hmm. Every single one of the services, whether it's grab the train or the bus, tells you when it will arrive. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a sense of comfort. That's mm -hmm. actually intelligence. We like as people, mm -hmm. as humans, to know when something is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Singapore's done a good job of uh, letting us know when mm -hmm. the train will come and, and it's there too. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that, of course, you, you lived in New York and then you migrated here in um, yes. Singapore. So how do you now compare um, that kind of um, technology and business environment in, I know, from the Western point of view and now here uh, with the uh, Asian perspective? Mm, I'll say something controversial. I sometimes feel when I go back to New York, okay. I'm going to a second world country <laughs> 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 so, compared to Singapore. Uh, the airport in JFK is quite different. The subway system, uh, the time it says there can be quite different than when the train actually comes. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a time that is displayed when the train will come. So, uh, yeah, there are quite a few differences where Singapore has gotten ahead in the basic infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about um, um, business. Of course, I, 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 I've, um, you've published uh, a book and uh, um, the idea so far, you know, when I read some of uh, the reviews, is for um, business owners to really 
deliver faster results. But my question is, you mentioned also that it has to be fact-driven and it has to be um, data-driven. In our in this world, or you know, where we get a lot of information and data from various sources, before you go into this actionable intelligence, can you define in in a layman's point of view what big data is? And uh, there are a lot of viewers who are not necessarily IT experts, but they, in some way or another, use big data without them knowing it. So how do you define big data? Well, I define it more about what we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. We never use things unless there's some benefit for us. Mm -hmm. Google Maps is a great example mm -hmm. of an application that does crowdsourcing. Mm -hmm. It looks at all of us. How long did it take for you to get there? OK, that's about how long it would take for me to get there, too. It does satellite. It does your GP, uh, GPS, of course. Mm -hmm. It's mapping. I mean, so much, that's really big data mm -hmm. to do a very small function. I want to get from A to B. Mm -hmm. But aren't we be delighted by it? We enjoy that so much that we will hardly leave home. Mm -hmm. uh, or we won't go back to the old Rand McNally map, mm -hmm. remember, and land in uh, Rome and look through, oh, where do I go? <laughs> That's not something we would consider going back to, mm -hmm. right? So businesses need to think through, how do I delight my customer? Mm -hmm. yes. How do I also guide my business decisions? Mm -hmm. So I like the Google Maps example because it's about oh. guiding the customer mm -hmm. to do something mm -hmm. that they want to achieve, whether it's buying a product or getting a service. The first question that a customer has is, is it available at the store I'm going to? Mm -hmm. Then the next is, and is it worth the price? Mm -hmm. Let me see the reviews and other things like that. Mm -hmm. And so that type of information gives customers confidence that they should make, take the action. OK, I should go there, or I should order it online. And that's what delights customers. Mm -hmm. If we can make it as simple as possible, mm -hmm. then we will keep them glued to our screen in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, just like when we were meeting here, I'm sure you used Google Maps to, hey, where does where's National University of Singapore? <laughs> <laughs> right? yes. It's fundamental. Um, and you knew what would be here. And so that's from the customer side and also from a business side. Uh, we're seeing now that analytics and data shouldn't, that's not the end goal. It was never data. Mm -hmm. It was answers that people wanted. Okay, yeah, I, I, I hold that thought. So when you say big data, you also introduce now analytics. For some people, especially those who, uh, the, the, the micro, small, and medium enterprises who are um, uh, viewing us now on social media and also on N25, to them, big data and analytics are something that's very um, threatening or something big or something that's very expensive. Now, can you describe, you know, in, in, again, in layman's terms, what big data and analytics is? Would they have to really invest this new infrastructure to get hold of it and make decisions out of it? It used to be the case. So what is big data? Big data is a type of information that you might want to pull together mm -hmm. to get more insights about either your business, your suppliers, your customers. Mm -hmm. But we're backing away from that and saying, what is the strategic business question first? What are you trying to answer? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to uh, have the right product for your customer at the right time mm -hmm. in the right store? Mm -hmm. Then you don't need big data for that. You need the right data for that. Mm -hmm. Now that might include information about what the customer bought last time. Mm -hmm. Is this about the time that they should be replenishing it? And that calculation is called analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I'm selling toothpaste, for example, then I should have some estimate as to when the customer last purchased mm -hmm. and how many months it'll be before they come back. And then that'll give me a sense, okay, when's this customer returning? Uh, when should I offer a promotion? 
uh, et cetera, and, mm -hmm. and what my revenue will look like. Mm -hmm. We use analytics to discover that in the point of sale receipts. Mm -hmm. So as much as the other piece of big data is sharing. Mm -hmm. In a economy where we're looking for answers, not just data, companies, even small companies, can begin to connect with the telco, can connect with their uh, manufacturers, can even go to the utilities, et cetera, and, and the real estate in particular, and say, hey, what's the trend look like? Mm -hmm. Are more people coming into the neighborhood? How many people are walking down the street? Mm -hmm. Various businesses that don't compete with each other have interesting data sets, mm -hmm. but it's just about asking the right question to get the value from it. Mm -hmm. And some of it's big data, uh, but important answers. Is, should my store be here? Will more people walk past in that case? Mm -hmm. uh, those are questions that we can now answer today. Mm -hmm. We have a very interesting discussion and more questions and very insightful responses when open for business returns. Stay with us. Arnie Aquino here at Hatley Castle, one of the filming locations for the X-Men series. Don't forget to tune in to Digital Nest only on Net25. Open for Business is back and still with me here in Singapore is the director of the FinTech Club of the School of Computing of the National University of Singapore or NUS, Keith Carter. Keith, it was a very interesting introduction earlier when we talked about um, uh, uh, big data and analytics. Now, how do you use it for businesses who are watching now? Yeah, you somehow with your explanation you tried to um, make big data and analytics sexy in the sense that they shouldn't be you know threatened or uh, um, hesitate to use it in their decision making based on the available resources how and uh, where will they get all this available information sure this is such an exciting time to be focused on data and to have data-driven decision-making. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's been a time in history when we've had more information at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. What I mean is that we used to consider things like pictures mm -hmm. to be unstructured data, difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, how would a computer interpret a picture? Mm -hmm. But today, we can just simply upload it and get back. What's in it? Was the person smiling? Uh, did they enjoy looking at something in our store? Do they enjoy looking at the sign? These type of tools are readily available online. Mm -hmm. For almost everything I would share with you, you can start, a business owner can start off for free, mm -hmm. and many times, if they're only using a little bit of data, it would remain a very, very low cost exercise. Mm -hmm. The tools themselves are online. Mm -hmm. You can use things like the Google Explorer Data Studio. You can download Power, Microsoft Power BI. Uh, you can get Tableau uh, online licenses. Many different tools that are available for you if we just use our time mm -hmm. differently. I think okay. this. Okay, before you explain on yes. that time. Because you, again, you, you introduced another um, <laughs> concept or terms like BI. Yes. So that's uh, in your in the technology, of course, it's uh, BI is business intelligence. business intelligence. Now, you also mentioned some brands like um, Tableau or Click or something. But you know, again, for large corporations, this used to be very very expensive uh, CRM or, or BI um tools and uh, facilities infrastructure but you are telling me now and our audience is that there are a lot of uh, um, softwares and resources that are free right. so now um, is this the trend now for and, and also you mentioned about subscription uh, subscription 
subscription based uh, applications where they don't really have to invest in a lot of exactly. infrastructure That's so right. can you um, um, uh, expound on that on how business owners and small and medium enterprises check out you know this free or softwares mm -hmm. or the available resources from the internet or other sources oh gosh yes I mean just going on if, if you google uh, using analytics for business mm -hmm. you would immediately get a nice list of options mm -hmm. um, I don't even know where to begin let's start though with imagining uh, my online presence as a company mm -hmm. and that's so important today people want to look at two things they want to see does your company exist mm -hmm. and in the minds of consumers today you exist if you have a web page which of course we know mm -hmm. and then you also exist if you're on Google Maps or TripAdvisor or whatever they're planning to come to you for like mm -hmm. you have to be there mm -hmm. and ideally you might be on Instagram or other things as well mm -hmm. but then if you are on any one of those properties let's call them I'll introduce the term. So those are digital properties. Mm -hmm. When you're present on Google Maps, that's like your, your space in the digital world. Mm -hmm. You can then also not even subscribe, but simply add in a little piece of code to your website, mm -hmm. which Google provides you for free. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to see a wealth of information about who's looking at your website, what part of the Philippines or the world are they coming from, how did they find you? Those can be really interesting to a business person to then say, hey, where should I advertise? Is it working? Uh, and who's going to be coming to visit my store next? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we talk about how. Let's go back to how. How? I mean, how is if we take a look at a tool like Data Studio, mm -hmm. which is free, then you can go in if you had your website with that small piece of code which we call a, a tracking code mm -hmm. that data studio would then read all the information of the visitors and people that came to see your store mm -hmm. done now you have insight into your consumer mm -hmm. things like gender basic dem demographic information mm -hmm. location um, it's more than what you knew before when you just, I hate to say it, place an ad in the newspaper mm -hmm. and you knew where the newspaper was sent to, mm -hmm. but you didn't know who opened it to that page and looked at it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, further, once you're in this data studio, you're able to go another step. Where did they look? What products did they click on? Mm -hmm. And did they convert from seeing the product maybe if you have an e-commerce store to buy mm -hmm. and here again even e-commerce is very low cost today mm -hmm. uh, and affordable to work with e-commerce partners mm -hmm. uh, but that's something to go in and look up mm -hmm. now you are the director of um, um, a fintech club here at the NUS and uh, it, back in the Philippines, uh, it's uh, there's already an organization also of uh, fintechs, and there's a lot of uh, major companies, especially the technology companies there now, who are really uh, making an impact as far as um, fintech is um, concerned. And again, when we say um, fintech, you know, for some, uh, it, again, it's it's overwhelming, but. No, when it, you you know I, I talked to, to one entrepreneur before you know when you pay your your bills via mobile that's fintech so um, what is the future of fintech in um, let's say let's cite the Philippines as an example because here in Singapore um, probably it's one of it's in uh, in its very mature stage already mm. but what is the future of fintech and how can um, small, medium uh, enterprises and businesses take advantage of uh, uh, the, the, the trend towards fintech? I think it's always good to take vacations mm -hmm. because then you can kind of see what the future could look like. Okay. So the U.S., what I mentioned I felt like I was going back to a second world country when I leave Singapore. Mm -hmm. It's because if I forgot my wallet at home here in Singapore, 
I can pay for everything with my phone. Mm -hmm. MRT, the train, uh, Starbucks, mm -hmm. everything that I, even the cafe where I, I get a sandwich, uh, even the smallest place that will make me just a soybean soup in the morning, I can also pay mm -hmm. with that. What is that? So that's financial technology. That's fintech. Payments are not new. We've been doing it since we were came to earth <laughs> but but t this the technology that facilitates the transaction in a secure way in a convenient way mm -hmm. it means that why would i do this i don't have to carry change i don't have to go to the atm anymore etc right so now if you sit back and think about how things are in the philippines and look at grab mm -hmm. wow i land in the airport there i come out uh, I book on my Grab taxi. Now I know that causes a disruption with the taxi industry. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, leave that aside for a yes. moment. Um, lives do change, but I book the Grab and I never have to touch cash. I don't have to convert Singapore dollars mm -hmm. to the, the peso at all. I just book and then they take it from my credit card and I'm on my way. So, and that's just convenient because then when I, lit, when I just left uh, Singapore a couple weeks, I mean, sorry, Manila a couple weeks ago to come back, I had no change, you know, no coins rattling around, nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything I had done on my phone. Mm -hmm. So I see that more and more in Manila, you have this cashless society coming from, mm -hmm. from the taxi to Starbucks to other types of stores. And uh, I think that's just going to be more and more the case. Mm -hmm. But is it Even your movie theaters. That's right. right. Correct. Correct. <laughs> but is it going to change a lot of business models? Will it uh, somehow... I, mean, I know that it's already changing the way we do business, the way we live. But mm -hmm. uh, um, especially you're, you're with the academy, you're uh, with a school of computing, you know, and a lot of you know, stuff, uh, information will become obsolete even business models. Will this now um, result to new business models and a change uh, you know, of uh, the, the way we do business? Definitely, definitely. It has to make it easier for people to get to do transactions, easier to do deposits, easier to take on loans, uh, much easier to facilitate sharing of money mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we, you don't have to go and, and make change anymore. I mean, it's something very small, but you can imagine what that means for the person who wraps the change usually. Mm -hmm. um, it's, again, a piece of work that could be better spent, hey, would you like this product, or how can I serve you better mm -hmm. uh, than simply wrapping up all my change at the end of the day, mm -hmm. or counting out all the things in the register. Uh, it's going to change the way we use our time. Mm -hmm. And, the, and then if you can figure out as a business owner, how does that make me be able to delight my customer even better, mm -hmm. then your business model will change. And is that the reason also why you authored this uh, book, Actionable uh, Intelligence? Where is it leading? And is this a new concept? Is this, um, is this something that you coined? Because, uh, when you say um, deliver it faster uh, with higher success rate using big data, is that something new or is it um, another innovation or another paradigm that you know, business owners should really look at? It is. It's a, the reason I wrote the book was to have a more practical way mm -hmm. to have business leaders get answers from their business and about how to serve customers. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, if you approach a math problem mm -hmm. the wrong way, mm -hmm. you might get the answer, but it can take you a very long time, or you might not even get the answer, right? Mm -hmm. If you approach the concept of data and the concept of actionable intelligence mm -hmm. in the right way, you can be very fast and respond to the changes in the market. Actionable intelligence means having the right information in the right person's hands at the right time in order to improve outcomes. Okay. So we won't leave our Google Maps behind when we visit a new city mm -hmm. 
because we know it's going to tell us where, where we go, mm -hmm. how long it'll take us to get there. Mm -hmm. It'll give us choices. Do we want to use our time and walk? Mm -hmm. Or do we want to use our money and take a car? You know, those, it gives us an option. Mm -hmm. And it also then says, by the way, there's traffic. Mm -hmm. So the right information in our hands, the right person, at the right time, I need it now. Mm -hmm. And if I have it, I know about traffic, then I improve my outcome. I can make a better choice. So actionable intelligence is what every company, every business leader always want. They want it mm -hmm. to know, if I spend this much on marketing, what will happen? Mm -hmm. uh, if I try to uh, target this type of customer, will that result in more sales? You know, those, and should I get more salespeople or, or use money or go online? Mm -hmm. Those are all questions and very good questions that business uh, men and women have wanted to know the answer to and have tried to test. But now, like I said earlier, we have more data than ever before mm -hmm. to see if that's working, what's working, and what should we do next. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. But, you know, having heard that, how would you now um, collate all the, this information into a um, system? Mm -hmm. Like, a lot, of, a lot of businesses, a lot of... Uh, um, SME owners still use, of course, the very traditional Excel um, um, software. Yes. And, uh, you know, sometimes even if there are a lot of uh, soft softwares which are uh, downloadable for free, they, they still stick to the traditional ways. Now, with all the data that you are mentioning, you know, with all the analytics, uh, insights that can be the um, driven and that can be called out of this uh, new information that we get. How, in, in, in a, if you c can create a road map, a step-by-step mm. -step guide, you know, to come up with um, a system or an infrastructure to make your intelligence really actionable, what would that be? What are those steps for you to really develop um, a system or infrastructure to, you know, get you going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the great things that we have today is to Google. Mm -hmm. Start off there. Mm -hmm. What is, what's worked uh, in my industry? Uh, is there a picture of a dashboard that mm -hmm. someone, or a template, even in Excel, that I can just download? And there's so many templates in Excel you can download and, and, and more to at least get started. Excel, I often say, is the most used business intelligence tool. <laughs> By far, it's the number one. <laughs> Nothing else is more. It's not the best, right? Okay. But it's the most popular because everyone has it and they're comfortable with it. The reason we're comfortable is because it's one of the few tools that we grew up with. Mm -hmm. Everyone had to use it for some reason. And okay, all done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, ha we have okay. to pause for, uh, sure, sure, for sure. a break. Open okay. for Business will return and we'll take the last job when Open for Business returns. Stay with us. Soccer, the world's favorite sport. And it's no wonder spectacular goals and plenty of emotion the best of game day kickoff Open for Business is back and uh, Keith Carter, the director of the FinTech Club of the School of Computing here at the National University of Singapore is with me and we were talking about your tips and tricks to small and uh, medium-sized enterprises trying, you know, from their Excel, making it sophisticated, making, making use of big data and a lot of information that are free. But Keith, what about the others, um, the, the medium to large uh, corporations who would, would want to create that roadmap into really establishing their actionable uh, intelligence. Sure. 
especially so, the ones who also have the money to invest uh, BI solutions because <laughs> there's a lot of them you know who are now uh, going into that mode of That's course right. and they would you know if, if the big brands are investing heavily on this mm -hmm. sometimes with the legacy infrastructure you know they're now you know some of the large corporations are really into that uh, a roadmap where they have to change everything to ensure that they are on top. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I'll talk to you about two models, if I may. Okay, go ahead. The first model is what we want to get to. So companies traditionally have provided in analytics or information for the tax authorities, for reporting, for finance, mm -hmm. which is just static information in Excel. But then the next level is data visualization, which is where you actually get to do discovery on the data. You've brought in multiple sources, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps some in real time, uh, from other, even from external business partners, and you're beginning to find out patterns, but visually, mm -hmm. what's happening. And there's a tremendous amount of low-hanging fruit in this area. Mm -hmm. Everything from on-shelf availability as the product there, on to you know, what returns or why are the reasons for returns, etc. Mm -hmm. The next level up from that is artificial intelligence and machine learning. Mm -hmm. That's where you use a system to find those patterns. You have so much data, so many different correlations that the computer is better at finding it than humans are. Mm -hmm. And the level above that is robotic process automation. Mm -hmm. That's where you can actually have cognitive abilities, and that's what I teach here at the university, mm -hmm. on top of your typical business functions. Mm -hmm. And so you can automate your finance, a function in finance or the function of the department of finance. That's where we're going to, and that's what some companies are doing right now. And that is what some employees and em employees fear, because it will replace their jobs. And uh, that's right. but. But um, I also, you know, talk with a lot of um, CEOs where, you know, they say that uh, they should not fear it because uh, humans would still be there. What's your insight on that? I completely agree that with those CEOs that said humans will still be there. And that's the second model I wanted to share. People's jobs will change. The roles will fundamentally change. But it won't happen unless, number one, these business leaders understand what is it they're trying to answer. What do they need to know? But number two, that they are able to bring up the skills of their staff mm -hmm. and also help their staff and team members adopt the answers. You see, intelligence is always optional. Mm -hmm. You can always make a decision without thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. well, some of us uh, have done that in life, right? Mm -hmm and business too. So when you begin as a company of any size to introduce data-driven decision-making, you make your executives, hey, wait, don't just tell me what's happening in the market. Show me what's happening. Show me with data. That's a culture change. Mm -hmm. It requires, number one, that finance and operations in every aspect trust each other enough to share their data. Mm -hmm. That's huge. The second is that they are in the habit of looking at the data before they make decisions. Mm -hmm. And the third is that everyone, top to bottom, is skilled mm -hmm. at using analytics. Mm -hmm. And it's that third piece that is sometimes missed out on. Uh, if I were going to invest in a large system, should I invest, and I had $100, well, how much of that 100 should I invest in the system versus the people and adoption? And I'd always say, very little system, people in adoption should be the majority. Wow. Now, on the path or the road map, where are we? Okay, let's talk about you know, Singapore. Where is Singapore? Because you know, when we talk about, of course, of course, other countries, we're maybe far behind. But let's talk about Singapore. Where are we in, as far as the, the steps that you mentioned? So Southeast Asia and versus the U.S. is very different in, in specific places in the U.S., New York, Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. If you just look at those places, 
even though I complained about the trains, the businesses back in early 2000s, we were already automating Excel spreadsheets, automating PowerPoints, mm -hmm. automating business functions mm -hmm. more than 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so Southeast Asia in general is a bit behind because that type of automation requires very good data. Mm -hmm. It requires you to share data across business silos. Mm -hmm. It requires a, cult a culture that says data is as important to me as gold. Mm -hmm. And so where are we? I believe that there's a good opportunity to not just catch up, but also leapfrog ahead. Mm -hmm. OK. Wow. So that, that, that's something. But again, the, the question that um, rings in my mind is, um, OK, uh, because on top as you mentioned, of um, machine learning and artificial intelligence is that uh, cognitive uh, learning, did yes. I uh, yes, say that's right. right? What is um, the future of cognitive learning and how do you try to influence, like say, for example, because you say that you're teaching it now, yeah. how do you try to uh, imbibe, imbibe it into the new society into the into uh, the mainstream and that's where our education system and businesses have to come back together again and say what is the curriculum look like mm -hmm. what should our kids be learning should they be consumers of data mm -hmm. which is all YouTube and iTunes it's just consuming data or should they be makers mm -hmm. and I believe it's imperative that every country be looking at where am I in this path? Am I, am I just a consuming nation or am I going to become a maker of this, mm -hmm. of data, of analytics, of using AI and going further to the cognitive uh, part? Uh, it's not simple. It won't be easy because it requires refocusing, reframing. Mm -hmm. How do we learn today? Mm -hmm. What do we need to do? We used to well, maybe I should stop there because it's such a big topic around how education should change. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's a different discussion altogether. Which means but, that you have to guess again. Yes. Maybe we'll get back to the okay. But in the business context, I'll focus it there. Business leaders need to again look back at their team members and say, you know, we don't have fax machines anymore. Uh, we don't have people typing memos anymore. Mm -hmm. We're using email. Mm -hmm. It's that dramatic a change. Mm -hmm. So now they're sending email, now they're going to be using that to even know more to how to delight the customer. What does the job look like? How mm -hmm. does it, we have to anticipate that. I think that's the most important thing that any country or business sector should be doing. Mm -hmm. Anticipate what's next. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now as the director of FinTech Lab mm -hmm. and also as, um, um, because you teach uh, at the School of Computing, what, what, what are you, uh, looking for in terms of uh, the future skill sets. How are you preparing you know, the students or you know, the, 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 the population you know, embracing or taking or creating you know, uh, new things rather than consuming them? Our FinTech lab is a educational lab. It's focused on experiencing what financial technology is about. We wanted people to actually touch a smart contract, mm -hmm. to feel what blockchain is like, mm -hmm. to be able to see what it's like to issue a loan across country borders. And so the lab is focused on that experience. Now, what, why do this is because we need it to increase the amount of interest in financial technology. Mm -hmm. Singapore sees it as a itself as a financial hub for the world. And so the more talent, the more capability, the more curiosity, the more interest from secondary school all the way through to uh, college and even professionals is really important to try to put in place. And so that's the capability that we're trying to achieve with the FinTech Lab. I'm amazed. Actionable intelligence. Can you tell that? briefly as a summary to our audience. Actionable intelligence, the right information in the right person's hands at the right time in order to improve outcomes. 
That's perfect. This is this has been a very insightful day as we have here Keith Carter, the director of the FinTech Club at the School of Computing here at the National University of Singapore and US. Thank you very much, Keith, for raising the show open for business. And we hope that you can we, we can talk about cryptocurrency and blockchain, you know, once you go to um, um, you know visit us in Manila, Philippines. Okay. That'd be a pleasure. That's open for business. Thank you very much. Stay with us. We'll be back. Net 25 available in the Middle East on OSN. ASEAN in focus. Monday to Friday, 2 to 2.30 p.m. In our term of the week, you take a refresher of business terms to make you updated, more informed, and ready to make smarter business decisions. Our term of the week is big data. Big data refers to the large, diverse sets of information that grow at ever-increasing rates. It encompasses the volume of information, the velocity or speed at which it is created and collected, and the variety or scope of the data points being covered. Big data often comes from multiple sources and arrives in multiple formats. According to Investopedia, big data also can be categorized as unstructured or structured. Structured data consists of information already managed by the organization in databases and spreadsheets. It is frequently numeric in nature. Unstructured data is information that is unorganized and does not fall into a predetermined model or format. It includes data gathered from social media sources which help institutions gather information on customer needs. Nearly every department in a company can utilize findings from data analysis from human resources and technology to sales and marketing. The goal of big data is to increase the speed at which products get to market to reduce the amount of time and resources required to gain market adoption target audiences and to ensure that customers remain satisfied and our words of the week is from jim jim barksdale he is the former ceo of netscape he said if we have data let's look at data if we all have opinions let's go with mine Thank you for watching Open for Business. Join us again in the next episodes of Open for Business for more insights from CEOs, thought leaders, and industry experts promoting business development in the Philippines. See you again next Saturday and Sunday for another episode of Open for Business where we discuss business information, deliver the latest business news to keep you informed and open for business, and be ahead of the curve from vision to action. You're on Facebook Live on Eagle News and you can watch this again in the video section of the Eagle News Facebook page and on eaglenewslive.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Eagle News. We're open for business. This is Cesar Vallejos. Have a great day.